This video is going to be in Revit MEP, um, but again, a lot of the things that I'm going to cover in here do translate over into Revit architecture and Revit structure as well. But basically, these are some questions that came up in a recent class that I was not able to get to. Um, so we're just going to run through them real quick. So it's a little mixed match, but you know you might find some good tips in here that are that are useful. Uh, creation of panel schedules is handled under the Manage tab. Panel schedules here. And it was new, I believe, in 2011, but we have the ability to uh, create our own panel schedule templates that can be used for our panel schedules. Um, and it's similar to working in Excel as far as um, you're kind of working with these different cells and applying um, different values inside of them. But uh, this is something that's covered more in detail within our um, uh, MEP four-day class. Uh, but just wanted to show you where it is and kind of uh, kind of how it works. You can edit font and things like that, but we're going to back out of here and come back. Um, difference between numerical and graphic offset. Uh, I just had seen that, but you know, didn't want to waste time looking in in case I messed up on it. But basically, if we come over to um, and even just draw a line in here, let me show you kind of how this works. Drawing a couple of lines. Basically, after using the graphical offset, I don't see much benefit of it to be honest. Um, numerical is nice. I can specify the distance and as we know I'll get a um, a line basically representing where it's going to offset to. If you do graphical right now you basically select what you want to offset and then you kind of pick a base point in the offset distance. So I'm picking a base point there and I'm going to offset it this far. So it's just like copy in a sense. Um, you can also take off copy but then it's just like move. So I, I haven't found a good use for that, but if I do, I'll be sure to let you know. Uh, as we come back here, change the default discipline when creating views. So this is a question that came up because we created multiple floor plans, um, and it's basically a question of what's the quickest way to make them all lighting plans. Um, I was hoping there would be a setting where I could set it, and then when I create the view, it automatically sends it where I want to. Um, but what I'm going to have to do here is set up a view template. So it's still a pretty quick workflow. Um, but what I can do is I can go into view template settings and I'm just going to duplicate one of my floors here, the electrical uh, plan template. So I'll use this down here and duplicate it, call it lighting. Ooh. Lighting plan. And if I come down here, electrical, basically the only thing I adjust here is um, change this to lighting. So now what I can do, I hit OK there. If I went in and just to show you how quick this can be, I'm going to make, we have three levels here, so that's nice. If I go to view, I'm going to create three new plan, three new lighting plan views. So I'll go ahead and allow myself to duplicate those, those views of those levels. Hit OK. Now you notice it's going to put them under the discipline of mechanical, subdiscipline of HVAC. But I can just go ahead and right click apply view template, lighting, and it's automatically going to set that discipline and it's going to uh, organize them in the project browser correctly. So now I see them there under electrical lighting. And then I could just go ahead and go in there and rename them. Um, so that's that. So now I'm going to come back to these questions. Overriding room separation line from Revit, the Revit architectural model. So if I come up to my, I think the second floor is low right now. Um, third floor is where this example occurred. So I'm just going to move this up to here. And then I'm going to jump into that view. Um, make another third plan, third floor plan here. Okay, so you'll notice here, uh, well, you'll remember we set this link to be room bounding, and this is kind of where the issue comes up. And if we do room bounding, and we use the, the room bounding elements of the architectural model to create our spaces, like this, you'll run into this, where the architect is has a room separation line, um, but we may want to treat it as one space. But as we talked about it more in-house, uh, we determined 
you could just set up the space properties to be the same and it really wouldn't matter. And then it is kind of nice that you're consistent with the architectural rooms and his room naming um, conventions for the particular floor. Um, so it's not too bad because what will happen is even if you try to turn off room bounding elements after creating those spaces, you're going to get an error that's basically going to say space is not in properly enclosed region because the space is using those room bounding elements. If you kind of turn them off, it doesn't really know what to confine itself to. So it's going to cause your problems. Um, so the answer to it is more or less don't try to combine spaces that the architect hasn't. Otherwise, you're just going to get into a big mess. It's easier to just make sure those spaces have the same properties and assign them to the same zone, and there won't be any effects on your heating and cooling loads. Ability to sort sheets by parameter or value other than name. Okay, so what we need to do here is you'll notice if I right click on sheets, and I'm actually, let me put a couple in here. And do okay. Make one more, one more. So you'll notice if I come into here and I renamed this to be um, M101, so this is my mechanical, it's called mech. I renamed this to be E101 electrical. And finally, we'll do uh, plumbing 101. You'll notice um, they're sorting alphabetically, but for the most part, um, it's kind of a standard to have mechanical, electrical, then plumbing. So the question is, how can we sort this um, and keep it clean how we want it? Basically, we're going to add a parameter, and it's going to be a project parameter. So what I'm going to do is go under the Manage tab project parameters here and I'm going to add a parameter and it's just going to call it sheet sort instance parameters correct this is just going to be we'll keep it as text and I need to make sure I assign it to the sheet category here we go group it under um, Text is fine, we'll leave it there for now. So hit OK. Hit OK. So now when I come under Sheets on Type Properties and I'm going to edit, oop, can't do it to all, oh, I got to go to, um, we can just choose one sheet prefix, we're going to duplicate it. Um, sheet. So call it User Defined Sort. And now I can edit the grouping. Um, but here's the other problem you're going to kind of have. What I'm able to do is sort by um, sheet number or scale, but I am allowed to group by that sheet sort. Uh, but here's so I'll show you. So now what we are able to do is take our different plans, and now the electrical will all be called, let's see right here, sheet sort. So if I come into here, I can make this two electrical apply it so basically you'll see it start to group these um, I can come into mechanical make that one mechanical there we go apply that same thing with the plumbing three plumbing so now you notice they're sorted in the correct order uh, so that's kind of nice, but one limitation that we currently have is that, you know, they're sorted in the re correct order, but what they actually are is grouped in the correct order. So they're grouped by that sheet sort property we, made, we uh, created. And I can change this to all characters and it'll make it look nicer for us, so mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Um, but the limitation I was talking about is right here. We are only able to sort by sheet number or scale. So they, you kind of have to group them, um, which works out okay, but it's not like you can just have one long list, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Um, you're kind of limited there. And there's also a limitation on the printing side as well, which hopefully we'll be able to give you a best practice for that. But it currently defaults to print in um, alphabetical order. 
So no matter what setting we have here, that's not reflected when you create a PDF set or even plot drawings. Um, so we're trying to find some, some nice workaround for that. But um, let's come back here to our questions. Organizing sorting views in Project Browser. Uh, same exact thing that I did for Sheets. The only difference would be you would apply the parameter. Um, so if I added a parameter here and called it view sort, I would just have to make sure I assign it to the views category. I think I made a length parameter. Yeah. And again, as you will find out soon enough, we cannot change it once it's set. Um, we just have to remove it. View sort, views, text. And now the same way sheets that I have that available, I can come into here, group by, and view sort. Um, so this is where you could start to customize the way it's sorted. But right now it's not too bad, the fact that it's electrical, mechanical, um, and the different subdisciplines. So you know, it's sorted and organized fairly well um, out of the box. So I wouldn't work too much on that. What happens if you reject a coordination change? Um, so basically this is a situation where if we came into, and I don't think it's going to show us anything because there are no coordination, coordination reviews uh, pending. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but basically what rejecting a change does is it saves it to that file so when the architect goes and opens it if there's something that he changes that was rejected by say the MEP um, engineer it would then only give him the option to literally it'll say do nothing or accept the change which means um, revert his model back to what was previous. So you would reject something if you just thought it was incorrect. Whereas you might um, postpone something that, you know, it's a, not a change you agree with, and then you can filter it out so that, you know, it's been reviewed, you're going to look at it later, but you want to go through the other coordination elements. Um, and that'll be shown more in our um, four day training. Uh, I don't want to run through it right now, it'll take too long to link the model and jump back and forth between architectural and MEP. Um, ability to hide architectural elements on a macro level. Uh, the same way we want to do um, setting the discipline, we can do that with a view template. So what we're going to do is say that in this model for some reason um, we didn't want the furniture to show in any view whatsoever. So we want to hide it on a macro level. So basically what I could do is come back to view and go back into my view template settings. Um, and I can go ahead and I'll uncheck everything. Well, first of all, I want to duplicate it. So I'll duplicate this and we'll call it arc filter. Okay, with everything unchecked, the one thing I do want to keep is, let's find it here, it's Revit links, discipline view. Here we go. So I come into this and edit this. So I want to make it a custom model custom as well. I know I'm moving fast, but you can always pause the video. Um, and we want to find furniture. So if I come up here, furniture, furniture. Apply, okay, apply, okay, so arc filter is what we created there. So now I could take all three of these and quickly apply the arc filter view template. Um, what's nice about this as well is I could do this, apply view template, and apply it to every single view. So now, no matter what elevation section that you already have created um, that view filter is applied so that's kind of a quick way 
And you don't have to worry about it messing up other aspects of that view because what's key is when we go to view template settings that we're only including the visibility graphic overrides for the Revit links. If you um, include it for view range or um, phase filter, if you have a phase project, you could really destroy a project by doing that. So make sure you're careful about what you're including when you apply these you know, large scale changes to your project. The last question, ability to create a 3D and the last question, ability to create a 3D plan of a single floor. So what we're going to do in this case is just come to a 3D view and I'm going to change it to coordination so the linked architectural is a solid color. Just make it look a little, little nicer here. And with this little drop down on my view cube, I can orient it to a particular floor plan. So I'm going to do the third because it has some interesting things on it. So it actually orients us to the plan view as well as creating the cut. It's uh, based off of the view range of that f uh, floor plan. And now I can also come into the visibility graphic overrides of this view and set it so that I don't see the ceilings and maybe I don't want to see the lights either. Hit OK. OK. And there you go. That's how you can quickly adjust a 3D view um, to show a single floor. So hopefully you learned a couple things in this video and thanks for watching.